Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BC. We're at Stacy King Cobra Boxing Club. And you're watching True School Sports. The untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents some of the boxing games been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, hope you guys are doing well. I'm going to the gym. I'm still, I'm still on my way to the gym. It's a beautiful morning here in South Florida. And I wanted to just talk about uh, a fight that I watched recently. I had a chance to, I mean, I've been watching a lot of, a lot of old fights since the, you know, quarantine coronavirus thing happened. And um, one fight I had a chance to watch yesterday was a heavyweight fight that took place way back in 1993 between Lennox Lewis and Frank Bruno. Now, I've heard a lot about this fight over the years because uh, I've heard a lot of the British boxing fans talking about talk about it. And I, I never understood how big that fight was uh, for British boxing until I actually sat down and watched it for myself. Um, so apparently, I never knew this, but apparently it was the first time in, in, in all of boxing history that two British fighters challenged for a heavyweight title. That two British fighters partook in a fight for the heavyweight title or for a, a heavyweight title. And I found that interesting because, you know, obviously uh, boxing, the or if you trace the origins of boxing back, started in the UK. It started in England. You know, so, so te te technically the home of boxing is England. But, um, you know, it was a big fight. It was a big fight. Which they had, they had it in Wales, which was, which I found interesting because, you know, um, Lou, uh, Bruno, Bruno had had a big following. He's a, he's a London boy, I believe, from West London, and the fact that it didn't happen in London and it happened in Wales, which was, it was weird to me, a bit, a bit weird to me. But I digress. The fight itself was an interesting fight because if we look at where Lennox Lewis was in his career. At that point in time, Lennox Lewis was coming off of two back-to-back -back wins against uh, Razor Ruddick and Tony Tucker. I believe he, I believe he stopped Razor Ruddick and he outboxed Tony Tucker. And uh, Bruno, I believe he had beaten before before he fought Lewis. His his previous wins coming his two pre, his two wins coming into that fight were against uh, Pierre Cotier and Jose Ribalta. But don't quote me on that one. Um, that being said, Frank Bruno always had this. This problem in his career, like this, this is a recurring theme in his career. If you still go look at his career, especially in his big fights, where he'd be up on the cards, and he'd find a way to to get to, to to fold in the end of the fight. You know, he he was kind of that noble loser. You know, he was he was he was good enough to give the top guys problems, but never really got over the line against the the the, 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 the names in the in the heavyweight division. So, you know, he he's kind of like that noble loser that that the British public can can gather around and support um, because they just loved him. He was one of their own. So, like, he had that problem early in his career. He fought Tim Witherspoon. He was up in the cards against Witherspoon. Witherspoon folded him up. Same thing happened when he fought um, James Bonecrusher Smith. He was out boxing Joe Bonecrusher Smith. He was up in the cards. Bonecrusher Smith folded him up and, and stopped him as well. So, remember I said that because that was a theme that, that happened in this fight with Lennox Lewis. Now, to really understand this fight, you got to understand where exactly both fighters are in their careers. Bruno is towards the end of his career, but he still has enough in the tank to, to, to give Lennox a good fight and potentially beat him. Um, you know, he's someone that, um, like I told you, he, he can give the top guys problems. And, and this fight took place in 93, so we're not, we're not talking about, you know, the Lennox Lewis. We're, we're, we're talking about a young... Lennox Lewis, who still needs some seasoning up to do in the professional ranks, he hasn't yet hooked up with Emmanuel Stewart, so he hasn't really gone to that next level. He he had he hasn't really become Lennox Lewis as of yet. So the match was interesting for that reason. Now another reason the, the match was interesting was the, um, even though the fight was between two be, between two British fighters, and in the build up to the fight, there was a lot of um, animosity towards the two, um, and that was also stirred up by the British media because of the fact that. You know, Lennox Lewis, uh, even, though, even though I believe he was born in the UK, you know, he has Jamaican roots. He represented Canada in the Olympics. So he's a very, you know, when we talk about globalization in boxing, Lennox Lewis fits the description. So there was a lot of uh, debate in the, in, the, in the leading up to the fight and the buildup about who was truly British and who wasn't. And, you know, uh, Frank Bruno kind of played on that. And 
you know, used it to his advantage. Um, and even when he fought Lennox Lewis on his trunks, it said true Brit. If you look at the back of his trunks, it said that it's, it's, he, he had on the back of his trunks true Brit. So he was basically, the way it was being built up was it was a true, you know, British man versus, you know, a guy who just claimed to be British, you know what I'm saying? So make of that what you will. And, and Lennox spoke about that a lot as well, like about how it didn't matter to him because once he beat Bruno, the Brits are going to be behind him later on. And that, that proved to be true. Now, the fight itself was interesting because Lennox Lewis, uh, many times in the fight, he found himself getting touched with left hooks, right hands, jabs. Um, Bruno had a couple instances in a, in, in a couple of the rounds where he was able to cut the ring off against Lewis and, you know, land some good shots on him and, and, and just put him in some uncomfortable situations. And, you know, watching Lennox Lewis in this fight was interesting to me because when you watch the more matured version of Lennox Lewis, the one thing, one thing that stands out that, 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 that that's a central part of his skill set is the jab and, and being able to control fighters with the jab and set up the big right hand. But if you watch this fight, you don't really see that from Lennox Lewis. There's actually a lot of times in this fight where Lennox Lewis is boxing with his hands down and you kind of hear the, you hear the HBO commentary crew, Jim Lampley and Larry Merchant, criticizing him for that. And... Well, I'm not gonna compare him. I'm not gonna compare Lennox Lewis to Deontay Wilder because I don't. I don't think he was that level of unpolished. I mean, again, this is a guy that won a gold medal, so he's not anywhere close to that level of unpolished. But I do think at that stage of his career, even though he was winning and and, and he was being some de decent contenders on the way up, he was still uh, trying to find himself, trying to find that identity in the ring. Um, so in the Bruno fight, you know, I, I, Bruno was actually, believe it or not, I'll box him. You didn't see Lennox Lewis dominating Frank Bruno, Bruno with the jab. Um, and I'm not gonna lie to you, like why, watching this fight, cause I never, I never watched it before, and I, I, I'll be honest with you, I haven't watched a ton of like the younger Lennox, the older, the, the earlier stages of Lennox's career. Watching this fight yesterday makes me believe even more that Riddick Bowe would have smashed him up because 90, 92, 93, that that was when the Riddick Bowe, Lewis, you know, feud was going on, and there's, I have no doubt in my mind that if he would have fought Riddick Bowe at that stage of his career. Riddick Bowe would have absolutely folded him up like a blue steel chair. But that's another discussion for another day. Bruno had his successes. He was able to, uh, dis despite, you know, maybe not being the, the uh, faster fighter in terms of hand speed or anything like that, and not even having the better boxing skills, he was able to really uh, trouble Lennox Lewis. He didn't, hurt, he, he, he didn't knock him down. I, I, he didn't really make him buckle with any of the shots he was landing, but they were landing. Um... You know, and he's a big, strong guy. So, uh, I, I, you know, credit to Lennox Lewis. He showed that he was able to weather the storm. And he showed the ability to continue fighting onwards and upwards. Despite the fact that Bruno was a very game opponent that night. You know, people want to slag Frank Bruno off because they say, oh, well, he, he, gets, he gets overlooked. Or not overlooked, but he gets, um, I think, unfairly downgraded because of the era he fought in. You know, and he, and he fell short in the, in the lion's share of his big fights. But, you know, Bruno is better than people want to give him credit for. Um, at least at least in America, I would say. Because when American fans talk about Frank Bruno, we just say the guy's whatever, you know? But he, when you go back and you watch him, you realize, hey, he may have been a second-rate contender back in those days, but um, he's still a, a, a better fighter than people want to give him credit for. And uh, he gave a lot of the top guys trouble. So respect, all respect goes out to Frank Bruno. But where the fight really went wrong for Frank, because um, they, they were fighting outside in a rugby stadium, so... Like, it was really cold, and neither one of them really had that much sweat on them when they came out into the ring, which is very important because if you, if, if you don't take the time to build up a good sweat going into the ring, your body, you know, with the adrenaline and the fans, can, stiff, can, can be very stiff, and you can struggle a lot in the, in the early stages of the fight. So I think that's what happened with Lennox Lewis, and the longer, the longer the fight went, the more he got warmed up, the better he got. You know, you started to see him around round five, round six, doubling up on the jab, finishing the combinations with the, with the right hand. Uh, you, you you begin to see, you know, the tools that Lennox Lewis had um, in those middle rounds. Um, and, and, and the way the fight ended was when Bruno, Bruno landed, landed a couple shots on Lennox Lewis. Lennox lost his balance, but it looked like he was hurt. Um, Bruno gets him into one of the corners, and he just starts unloading. Um, and a lot of times, too, when a, fighter, when, when a fighter has another fighter hurt, the fighter who's attacking... The fighter who's hurt is can, can be very vulnerable because 
he's he's throwing a lot of punches and, he, and he's leaving himself wide open to counter punching opportunities. And that's what happened here. This is a great example of that. Um, he's throwing three, four punch combinations, and Lennox Lewis hits him. I mean, just with the most beautiful left hook you'll see out of that corner. Um, turned it all the way over. You know, got got the knuckles right on the chin of Frank Bruno, and he had him hurt. He had him hurt badly, and um, you know, he eventually got Frank Bruno in one of the corners of the ring, um, and he landed a series of uppercuts that eventually finished him off, and, and he pretty much, you know, Frank, Frank Bruno pretty much snatched uh, defeat from the jaws of victory. You know, they, they say usually you snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Frank did the opposite. History had repeated itself for a third time in his career. He's up on the cards against, you know, he was up on the cards against Witherspoon. He got stopped. He was up on the cards against James Bonecrush Smith. He got stopped. And in, in the Battle of Britain, a, a battle for bragging rights, a battle against a guy that he really wanted to win against, that at that point in time he needed to win against because he was at the latter stages of his career. Um, he's up on the cards again, and he gets stopped again. So, you know, it was it was what it was. But uh, this this fight to me, I think, was great for the development of Lennox, Lennox Lewis because of the fact that um, the reason I think it was great for the development of development Lennox Lewis because he showed himself that he could be down on the cards and he would and, he, and, and that he had the fortitude to come back. And you know, it's always it's always comforting for a fighter when you know you're losing in a fight, but you have it in you to come back. So this is this is a good for his career, and. Um, you know, it was good for his confidence, and he's, you know, they interviewed him after the fight about Riddick Bowe and potentially fighting him, and he pretty much said that he would beat Riddick Bowe, and, you know, I, he should say that, but I, I still believe, I believe to curl my bones, that if they would have fought at that stage of Lennox's career, because I, I'm, I, like, I was watching that fight, I'm watching these left hooks, some of these combinations Bruno was landing are, 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 the, are the same combinations Riddick Bowe threw, throws with more speed, with more fluidity, um... And he's just, you know, he's a he's a better, he's a way better fighter. He's a, like like in terms of fluidity and punch and combination punching, at that stage of his career, Riddick Bowes is a better fighter than Lennox Lewis. Now, the Emmanuel Stewart version of Lennox Lewis that had a that had a world class jab and knew how to use it to set up the right hand. If if he fought the '92 or '93 version of Riddick Bowe, then maybe it's different. Maybe maybe it's a bit different. But at that stage, I just I, I couldn't I couldn't see it happening. But. It, 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 it's always going to be one of those age-old debates amongst boxing fans. But anyway, that's my little synopsis of the Lennox Lewis-Frank Bruno fight. Uh, if any of you have watched that fight in the past, let me know what you think about Frank Bruno versus Lennox Lewis. Um, and maybe any little things that I missed, uh, leave your comments down below. Take the time to subscribe. But like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just kidding, Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys. Denise and you're watching True School Sports. All right, thank you.